Disney presents The Wonderful World of Color. This is a tale of the far north, a story the Indians love to tell around the campfire on long winter nights. It's the legend of Minado the Wolverine. Minado the hunter, the trapper's enemy and the Indian's friend. For the Indian long ago learned to respect the Wolverine's ways. And most of all, the animal's uncanny powers, which at times seem almost human. The tale began one morning during the moon of falling leaves. The old she-bear, Niwa, was out for one last foraging trip before hibernating for the winter. Suddenly, she detected the scent of another animal. It wasn't this that was unusual. Any animals were on the move at this time of year. The unusual thing was that the strange scent seemed to be coming from her own den. So that was it, a wolverine. The first in these parts in many a moon. Now, the Indians will tell you that a wolverine is a match for any bear. Courage, says the ancient legend, doesn't necessarily go with size. Sure enough, cautious old Niwa suddenly decided she'd hibernate somewhere else. She Wolverine's reason for wanting the den became clear. It would serve as home and headquarters, not only for herself, but for a strapping youngster who was nearly as large as she was. This was Minado, Minado of the legend, whose name had a curious meaning. The word signifies demon, so say the Indians, and Minado would prove a devil among demons. On this particular morning, the two wolverines set out to travel as a pair. It was a good day for a journey, a good time to become familiar with their new hunting ground. Wolverines are tireless animals, and their characteristic lope carries them swiftly across great stretches of territory. On this eventful day, an incident occurred that would drastically change Minado's life. A canoe appeared on Kona Lake, and in it was the first human the Wolverines had ever seen. Minado and his mother weren't frightened. The Wolverines seldom are. They didn't run away. Wolverines seldom do. Instead, they were curious in the way of their kind.
By habit, Wolverine will watch you from a place of concealment. And this is just what Minardo and his mother did now. was unnecessarily noisy, constantly shattering the stillness of their peaceful woods. Hello! The camp! Hello! They studied the man with interest. Apparently, he was seeking some sort of a hideaway, or as an animal might, some sort of burrow or den. This one appeared to be about what he had in mind. He rearranged it a bit, as any creature might, but on the whole seemed to accept it for his purpose. Perhaps if the Wolverines had been wiser in the ways of man, they'd have recognized him for what he was, a trapper, and therefore an enemy. They couldn't read the signs that the man had come well prepared, that he intended to stay, that he would take his toll of all fur-bearing animals. Wise in the ways of wild things, the trapper had chosen his spot with care. Almost certainly an animal would pass this way. Perhaps a fox, perhaps a marten. He didn't much care which. To a man in his game, furs were furs. That very same morning, his calculations were confirmed. Minardo and his mother came romping along, free as the wind, without a care in the world. It was Minardo's mother who came on the trap set first. Unfamiliar with such things, she found the cleverly offered bait most tempting. Minado sensed something wrong, without quite knowing what to do about it. When the trapper appeared, Minado knew a moment of panic. Should he run? Should he stay? only one answer. He knew he must hide. <laughs> and so it was that Minado was an unwilling witness to tragedy.
scene would stay indelibly marked in his memory for the rest of his days. The bitter experience had taught him one thing. Now he understood the meaning of traps and guns. And in his wild heart, there flared a fierce hatred for this wanton enemy who would use them. Thus, the legend began. The story the Indians loved to tell. How a wolverine set out to get revenge. It might be slow in coming, but Minado the demon would not rest till it did. Minado's hatred was only an awareness in the dim recesses of his brain. An animal is more apt to feel the present than to think about the future. And so Minado did not immediately act upon his impulse. Besides, there were more pressing things to take care of, matters of hunger and hunting to attend to. A fat Canada goose is fair game any day, and all the better if it's nesting. Then your target is pinned down and cannot delude you. But if there's one thing to match the wolverine's kind of courage, it's maternal instinct. The mother goose can put up quite a battle. Well, Minato decided, if not the goose herself, how about one of her eggs? The problem was how to get it, and the way was to appear not to want it. A wolverine is as wily as a fox, and he can match wits with almost anything. little trick worked. It was all in knowing when to move and when not to. The days that followed were filled with hunting adventures. There were places he had yet to visit and explore. And for the moment, Minado seemed to have forgotten the hated trapper. there's one thing a wolverine won't tolerate, it's some other animal working his hunting ground. And now he'd caught the villain in the act. It appeared that a Canada lynx was poaching on his territory. When this happens, be it wolf, bear, porcupine, or the entire cat tribe, his temper is quick to explode. <laughs>
trouble threatens, it's the natural instinct of the cat family to climb a tree. But now the lynx realized he'd made a mistake. He'd worked himself out on a limb with nowhere to go. Better to turn back. But too late. The wolverine was catching up. so happens, can climb a tree as well as any cat. And now, for the lynx, distasteful as it might be, there was only one way out. It had been a hollow victory, but decisive enough for Minado's purpose. He had chased a rival off his premises and could get on with his own hunting. It was one thing to establish authority, but quite another to go empty-handed and still hungry. So now, Minado set out to find a truly respectable meal. When all else failed, there was one place he knew he could count on. One hunting ground that never disappointed, especially at this season. This was the time of the salmon run. Here was food aplenty for the mere choosing. So much, in fact, it was hard to choose. Minado soon found himself ignoring the easy catches. He bide his time and tried for the big one. that he ended up with a prize weighing almost as much as he did. According to the legend, there came a day when a strange sound caught Minado's ear. It was an irritating sound, harsh, dry, the bite of an axe chopping logs. To Minado, everything this man did seemed out of place and noisy. He could feel his hatred returning. And then the Indians come to their own part of the legend. How they returned to their camp one day and found the trapper already there. Get out of here! Go on, get out before I shoot. Go on, get out. There ain't no room for you. How he ignored the laws of hospitality. 
Get out! Hurry it up! Start moving! How he selfishly drove them out of their territory. How the demon spirit saw all this and decided to take their side. Trapper couldn't know what they knew, that he had made bad medicine. From now on, so the legend goes, the Trapper would not know a moment's peace. Minado began with the hated axe, that monstrous thing that cut down the trees and broke the stillness. He resented not only the man, but his tools as well. And one by one, he was determined to destroy them. Next morning, when the trapper wanted kindling for his breakfast fire, he made a startling discovery. His axe had disappeared. was certain he knew who had it. And this is the part that amuses the Indians most. He was certain it had been stolen by those very same Indians he'd run off the day before. The trapper was a smart man, the Indians say, but not as smart as he thought he was. With great care, he hid his venison in the woodpile, thinking he was hiding it from them. Nado was watching. By now, the Wolverine had become a self-appointed nemesis. His mission, to make life miserable for his human enemy. So far, he had the advantage of secrecy and surprise, and could pretty well call the turn in this curious game of wits. There were many ways to embarrass the enemy. And one of the easiest, of course, was to steal his food. Now, a kind of frenzy possessed Minado, and he seemed to rise to the challenge. It was as though he had the strength and determination of ten Wolverines. same day, within the space of a few hours, the first of winter's snows touched this landscape. The change was quick, for in the far north, winter can come suddenly. Now was the time of the ice moon. This was a whole new world. Minado was making the rounds of the enemy's trap line. remembered these cruel contraptions well, too well for the trapper's purpose.
He seemed to find an almost human pleasure in playing this game his way. The trapper had used a variety of sets, every trick he knew, everything that had worked before. But for every new puzzle, Minado knew it was the same answer. wasn't content just to spring the traps. That wouldn't do. He must have more satisfaction than that. And so he displayed the trait that made him what he was. It's the Wolverine's way always to add insult to injury. trapper headed home. Tomorrow, he'd make the rounds again. Tomorrow, he'd collect the first pelts. Suddenly, this pleasant reverie was cut short. Something about the woodpile bothered him. It didn't look right. Someone had been here. Someone had stolen his entire meat supply. The snow had covered their tracks, but he was sure he knew who had done it. It was those Indians again. Then and there, he made up his mind to put an end to these thefts. Accustomed to dealing with animals, the trapper sometimes thought like one. And now he set a new kind of trap, a man trap. Baited with something he figured the Indians couldn't resist. Let them come. This time he'd be ready. This time, a deadly surprise. No one was going to drive him out of prime trapping territory. It would be a long night. But he was prepared for that. It was nearly dawn before the prowler came, and not the one expected. It was Minado, unknowingly walking into an ambush. shot rang out, for the simple reason that the trapper was momentarily disarmed. His fiendish trap had failed, but the bait was still there, an object still to be stolen just to prove Minado's hatred and contempt.
Next morning, the trapper made the discovery that would finally set him straight. Tracks at last. A wolverine. This was it, the day for the showdown. And this, it so happened, was the day a second wolverine came into the territory. This, says the old legend, was the female named Nusha, whose name meant wonder. And so it was that Nusha came upon some tracks that were unfamiliar. As most trails do, this one led somewhere, straight to another of the trapper's cleverly concealed sets. The bait was out in the open, invitingly displayed, in fact. But beneath the snow, there lurked cold steel waiting for its victim. On the back trail, meanwhile, Minado was following the faint drift of an animal scent. It told him the animal was one like himself, new to the neighborhood, but definitely one of his own kind. When he came to the double trail, Nusha's overlaid on snowshoe prints, he read it accurately, danger. And he pushed on faster. This was an all too familiar scene. Minado remembered how his own mother had been caught like this. And worse, what had finally happened to her. There had been so little time to do anything before, there might even be less time now. He knew he must somehow solve the problem quickly. Quite unhurt, Nusha found herself strongly attracted to this clever male who seemed so wise. And so, the old legend goes on, the exuberant courtship that followed was played out in a winter wonderland. Thus it was that Minado brought Nusha to his den. From now on, this would be her home too.
Meanwhile, the trapper was reading the signs and figuring out what had happened. More than ever, he knew he had reason to destroy the enemy that was robbing his traps. Otherwise, his whole season would be wasted. A day or two later, Minado was returning from a hunting foray, unaware that disaster was threatening his home. Nor was Nusha aware of it either. While waiting for her mate, she'd begun to explore her new surroundings and had failed to notice a certain threatening shadow. sounded like a rifle, Minado sped home. The trapper had waited a long time for this moment. He wanted to make doubly sure he'd finished off his foe. He hadn't yet realized there were two. And now it was fang and claw. The animal trying for the kill, the man desperately trying to save himself. Fearful of a new attack, the trapper waited in cold panic, certain that another encounter would finish him. But Minado had broken off the battle and already was retracing his steps back to where Nusha lay, still as death where she had fallen. Ever so gently, Minado tried to rouse his mate and found the faintest flicker of life still present. Within minutes, Nusha had regained consciousness. The rifle bullet had only creased her forehead, momentarily stunning her. Now that she was herself, Minato decided, and could be safely left alone, there was one more important chore he must perform. The legend of Minado has many facets, but none more curious than what happened next. A wolverine went on the warpath. Minado set out to destroy every last thing the trapper owned. And the place to do it, of course, was inside the enemy's house. No matter that the cabin was tightly shut against all intruders. No matter that the door was locked, the window bolted. Minado had already solved the problem. To an animal of his intellect, it wasn't hard to figure out. There were other entrances that would serve as well. Methodically, Minado went to work. To a wolverine, 
What greater pleasure than this? Poking his nose into other people's possessions. particular system to it. He took things as they came. But before he was through, there wouldn't be an untouched, unopened, undamaged carton or container in the place. the end of his strength, the trapper headed home. Gone were his snowshoes, his rifle. Gone to all desire ever to face a wolverine again. Those telltale tracks. had been here, and in his fiendish way, he had been busy. Here was devil's work done with a vengeance. To the Indian heart, this is the choice part of the legend. What Minado did to the trapper's belongings. This is the last laugh. The whole point of the story for any man foolish enough to take on a wolverine deserves his comeuppance. So saith the wise men of the tribe. There isn't much more to the tale. Near desperation, the trapper searched for his spare rifle and found comfort in its cold touch. Here, at least, was one thing the Wolverine hadn't carried off. But what good was it? Empty. Two last chances for survival. depended on luck, and at the moment, his was running low. His only chance to get out before the blizzards came. It was three days to the trading post. With any break at all, he just might make it. legend comes to its close in the time of the green moon, when the south wind brought the freshness of spring. Minado and Nusha were together once more, 
free to roam at will this land that was now theirs, theirs to roam and rule for all the moons to come. And to the wisest of the wise, the ancient people who tell this tale, this was well. This was as nature intended. This was as it should be.